heavily on mood and lighting. And so in that case, it was part of the story. Absolutely. Right? So I really didn't answer the question. I said, <laughs> that's, that's totally fine. Brian and Julian, again, you guys are uh, an interesting uh, you know, case study because, because you know what, what it takes. Yeah, you know, this whole program opened with uh, someone jumping in the water in an underwater camera shot. Instantly, I'm setting up, cool. like, I'm paying attention. So pure entertainment value is where the production elements are, are going to come in. They use it and take notice. On the other hand, Dan Sheehy, um, Sean Cavite, we call him Indiana. I mean, those guys. The production value had to be enough to support and and get us into those emotions and make you characters like a lot of the other films. So if it's character driven film, the production value has to support that. And it's also about clock. The, the production value was it was right to really 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 Yeah. So it has to match the tone of the film. So it is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's even better perhaps if you don't don't even notice it. But a couple thousand whistles makes you sit up. I think it's really connected to story too. I mean, the environment. I think that's really important to the story. I think that a lot of people skimp on the production design budget in indie films and, and throw it to camera. Um, but I think it's more important to create the world that you're going to film. So you could shoot on something extremely simple like a DSLR. But if the world that you're filming is really interesting and unique and it, and it speaks to the story, um, people will be immersed and. So I think yeah, people went for it. The ones we jumped out, we saw there, there was a transit, was a, it was a hospital, uh, it was in an ambulance, we sat up with that. And we on was route? Uh, what was it? On route? Oh, on, on route, I'm sorry. Yeah. On route. Oh, transit is the one. Van. It was the so the now you have one in a van. We saw somebody was at, the, was at a horse race track. And so instantly we're like, you yeah, know, it was Yeah, so anytime you can switch it, it'll make it different. Uh, we went to New York, I mean, that was part of our strategy last year was to get out of LA. Um, and we saw, and we instantly, our interest was peaked when we saw another one in the program that was definitely outside of LA. It stood out, so. Jordan? Uh, I pretty much agree with everything they said. I think the only thing I would add is that in the context of a contest like this, where they had a very limited amount of time, I think production value should be weighted more heavily um, because it's just that much more of an accomplishment to bring production value to something where you have so little time and um, not, which is not to say that production value alone can substitute for good story, good characters, you know, all that. I just think that um, it's uh, it's an incredible achievement to put something together that looks good, that has real technical craft behind it in such a short time. So you mentioned uh, super idiots. Like that's uh, amazing. Like, so what are your thoughts on Happy Hands with the two weeks? I have no idea how they did it. I really don't. <laughs> Because I mean, I, we've you know, Chuck, we've acquired a bunch of uh, animated features, and um, there are some that we've been talking about acquiring for the last three years. And um, granted, they're they're ninety minute or so features, three years. I mean, animation takes a long time. So you put something together um, that looks good, and, and then of course has all the benefits of having a lot of fun and, and funny. Uh, it's really impressive. Lauren. Um, I'm really more with Luke on this one, um, and, and, that's, and, 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 that, and, that, and that goes back to exactly your point when I'm taking the opposite side, which is because you have such limited time, I'm really looking at, at while I think it's absolutely important, no question, I'm looking at concept, I'm looking at writing, I'm looking at directing, I'm looking at acting. So you can have great production value, but if your story sucks, it sucks. If the directing sucks, it sucks. If the acting sucks, it sucks. You know, I mean, it's like, if you can, you know, what's the saying? You can't dress a pig or put lipstick on a pig. Put lipstick on a pig, right. And so I think it can be a cheat. I can, I can list a number of very fancy A-list directors who are great at getting great production value, and I think they're kind of crappy directors. Um, so, so, yes, while it is important, 
I mean, if there's zero production value, then yeah, that's going to impact my overall experience. But when you have two weeks to do it and a shoestring budget, it's at the bottom of the list. Okay. Well, you mentioned, let's go to the other direction. You mentioned writing. So, um, again, it's two weeks, so that is something that has to be taken into consideration. But do you know what, what, so what, what is the impact of writing? And I think we can also kind of push into the back a little bit, too, uh, in, in these kind of two week features, in two week shorts. And, and if there's something that like jumped out at you here in terms of like being specifically a writing accomplishment, and, and I want to go. I don't want to necessarily go towards acting at this point. Just what is like towards writing or acting accomplishment? What um, jumps out at you that kind of works and shows you um, a bigger picture in terms of the talents uh, being demonstrated? For me, yeah, sure. Um, well, let's see. Based on the ones that we watched, um, already gone. Really jumped out at me. I thought that was very smart writing. Um, I, I, I think it it, it showed um, a. I felt like I was more of a sort of a you know voyeuristic rather that I it was so natural the dialogue that the acting didn't feel like acting. And um, and I thought that was, I mean, that definitely stood out for me. And I think the same is true for, uh, let's see, did it play? I won't miss it. It didn't play. Coin. I mean, there was no dialogue. He anymore. said it, not me. There was no dialogue. Um, let's see, uh, the best medicine. Very strong dialogue. Sure. Well, writing is obviously incredibly important. Uh, it has to serve the character, it has to serve the story. Um, uh, I, I think that uh, I responded to the writing when it was uh, naturalistic and it, it felt like I was watching real people. Um, and I think that. Um, Already gone, yeah. Um, there was also, um, I also felt like, for example, Misfortune, which didn't have a whole lot of dialogue, uh, had a really interesting story. And I thought the characters were interesting, which I think is a credit to the writing and, of course, the performances. Um, there was uh, the one, um, you know, I think you know, Super Idiots made me laugh. Uh, but what, uh, what's the one where they're stealing, they try to steal the ring? They're in the car. Go in here. Yeah, that one. Um, that also made me laugh, actually. And I, I liked the characters, and I thought that I liked the banter, and I liked the, the rhythm of it, and I thought it was a strong writing. Uh, should I get something like Boolean? Like, yeah, should I? Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> 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 Look, everything they said, you guys all watch them, so you know. Films that appeal to you. I think we saw a lot of conversation, dialogue that felt very natural uh, and, and clocked, like uh, the, the voiceover that was going in your head. Um, for, I, I will say, to be honest, when we were watching the films, there was one film, we literally stopped and rewound it to replay some of the dialogue. It didn't make this girl haunting. But, um, but that was the one case where we were like, what, what did they wear? Is this, it was amazing. So, sure. Yeah, it'd be true. So yeah, so so yeah, dialogue can really have a chance to set out and really kind of shot through a punch you. Uh, again, I think writing it, it's always important, but it it, it depends on the job. Yeah. If you're doing a thriller, for instance, writing is everything. Right? Like mapping out story beat by beat in the script and kind of using the script as a blueprint and not to be messed with is very important. Uh, at the same time, since the advent of digital technology, since we don't play shoot movies on, on film anymore, um, comedies don't really lean so heavily on scripts anymore. I mean, they're, they're mostly um, improv bits. Um, so I'd say in a comedy script is less important, even, even to some extent um, in a drama. 
story and move it in a different direction in a way that you couldn't 10 years ago. Um, but that said, for a lot of like horror uh, thrillers, you can't really deviate from the script. Did I answer the question? More or less. <laughs> yes, I was in the, was the realm of the question. <laughs> what was that? Does that mean that our voting, wait, does that mean our voting is, is done? Like the like, like, you all put in what, 20, 50, 100 hours into each of these shots, and it all starts with a script. So why not spend 10 hours, you know, sharing the script with people? I mean, if, if you wrote a script and made a script for this film festival, and you know, five other people didn't read it, so I said the same thing last year, but really rely on your friends and peers. I mean, even if you're Auntie who's never read a screenplay has five pages or six pages. Like, let them read it. There's always going to be something good come of it. So I just, I just really impress upon you to, to really share your scripts. Don't be precious about them. I mean, this is a fun festival to make films, and, and you know, it should be enjoyable. So really, you know, spend the time on you know having other people read it. I, I think the, the plot and the idea and the concept is really imperative in, in the short film world. I mean. Look at Sundance, I mean, I watched you know, 80 short films from Sundance, and you know, they all kind of blend up 70 from here. They, they, you know, they do tend to blend a little bit because you're watching them in, in blocks. So, you know, if you can't piece the idea in one or two sentences and get someone to say, oh, that's a cool idea, then move on to the next idea. Like, it's just spend that time on the script. Okay. Well, you know what? Um, do you want to answer the question, Jeremy? Or otherwise, we're ready to move on. Thank you. All right, the gentleman's coming. Please, thanks to our fabulous guys. We're going to have a couple of quick minutes before they go back to the green room or reach outside as well. Uh, Joanna Mollick was one of our other judges, a manager for, and uh, producer of the Game of Entertainment. She's going to be here. She was going to remember the 95th anniversary, which she tells me only happened. Maybe for 95th birthday, she tells me only happened once. I'll give you all her email afterwards. Yes, please do. Please do. Uh, and then the other thing I want to point out is right here, the Pod Brother podcast. So after uh, everything is said and done, um, Stephen here would like to, you know, interview a filmmaker. So please come down and like I say a few words about your experience and the But thanks to our judges, you're going to Thank you so much. Right. Uh, what? You were saying, keep talking about points? Keep talking. Yeah, that's good. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and pass it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to start uh, talking about our winners. So, this uh, is our, uh, our uh, screen up there. Brad? 30 seconds. 30, oh, 30 seconds. Did you have to restart? I got anything else you want to comment on? So you wouldn't have a question like answer in 30 seconds? So, yeah, this is a glorious moment for some of you. Sorry, what, what was that? <laughs> 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 I have a question. Yeah. Where's your jacket from? 
Great question. Anything else? Uh, Corey was about a dude who uh, went to the laundromat and kept hearing scary noises. So it was just, it was just, a, it was like, a, it was like, remind me of Rear Window. It was just an exercise in sound design, building tension. Nothing really happened at the end, right? Because he woke up half, uh, three quarters of the way through and he realized, oh, he was dreaming. And then he entered that same scenario that he's dreaming about. And it, um, it was good. But it was, it was a great example of, of doing a lot with very little. And leaning into your, leaning into your strengths, right? And that's, um, I think, an important takeaway. It's something that I've learned over, over the years. Like, there are some things that I'm really, really, really good at. There's a lot of things that I blow at. And um, I, I just realized, like, hey, I should just lean into to the, to the few things that I'm, that I'm good at. And um, yeah. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You know I love you guys, too, by the way. When uh, your name is announced, uh, you know, winning prize, you come over to this side, um, and then uh, uh, the prizes, I will give the prizes. Uh, they're going to come right out here in the end on the table. Uh, I'll give you the prize, and then uh, over there, our photographer will take a picture of you with your prize. So, Please, uh, yeah, that way we can this in the All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is best set photo. And the winner, the best set photo. Are the prizes out here? Can we can bring the table out, please? Can you bring it? Can you bring it? Can you bring the table out here, please? Can you? I will go get the tables, the prizes. <laughs> Did something get given away? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay, so uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Best that photo goes to Nicholas Gilbert. Thank you. This is a $200 cash prize. Yeah. $200. I'll pay for crafty. Yes, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's open mine. Get your picture prize, and we're going to keep going. Yeah. All right, let's keep the quote. This is the one drop. This is a $100 gift certificate to Premium Beats and uh, some of these extremely nice award certificates. And I put a lot of time into it. Just so you know. I signed it and everything. And the winner. Go right back that way so you can take a picture. There you go. I appreciate it. Good job. Now, best use of quotes. This is our, our big prize, and this is why this gets a trophy as well. Look at this thing. This is fantastic. This is uh, pure. Pure uh, military grade acrylic. <laughs> um, you know, it's like uh, after the apocalypse, this could be worth ten times as much. Our winner, McGregor Singh. Uh, winner 
share of best writing, which is $500 cash and a copy of Final Drafts. And of course, Joe. Clark! Thanks for coming in, guys. Collaboration filmmakers challenge, and they're giving the award. Where is, where is my guy? There he is! Yes! Welcome to Pound Button Nation. Is this one? 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 Best uh, actor. Oh, no, sorry. Best technical achievement. Best technical achievement runner-up is a $250 gift. $250 gift card to Stray Angel. And the winner is... Cox! Sean Ebert. Where's Sean? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Now, our next prize. Best technical achievements. First prize was a $500 cash and I'm gonna keep selling these things like this was like this was QVC. Uh, this wonderful trophy, and the winner is Super Hands Trophy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One now, you can make this thing in two weeks by itself. This is your <laughs> <Right. laughs>
this. Oh my God! You are, you are amazing. You should have done more shots. The uh, key collaborator runner up, this is $1,000. Cash money. The winner. Miriam, how you? Oh, you She's quiet at the moment, so I'm going to Howell's Samara Howell. Samara has been tapped for this job. All right, I'll keep it. It's a thousand bucks. More than that. Now, uh, I'll give this to Samara later. So, okay. Finally, our final key collaborator winner. This is fifteen hundred dollars and this incredible trophy. She was in everything. Please, I did a great job. Okay. Thank you. We have a $5,000 development deal from the Chow Factory, and we have a $5,000 cash award. So those are our three significant projects. So we're going to do the honorable mention of the runner up, and then we're going to do the uh, development deals, and then we're going to do the uh, $5,000 cash prize. So, on, our, so, first of all, honorable mention the jury prize. This is, this is uh, a $200 gift certificate to so bring me a beat. But of course, the award certificate. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in my city. <laughs> 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 winner! There you go. We're going to see now. This is Richard. Congratulations. <laughs> this is all you. One, two, three, four. Yeah. All right. The runner up. This is a uh, $500 cash award and a copy of Final Draft, our fine sponsor, who we saw from show music. The winner of this, the runner up is. It's like having the biggest star sighting in the world. Uh -huh. you know, I, I see all the faces that were in, in the movies, and it's just a little disoriented. Especially since so many of the actors were in multiple films, and I'm confused as to who you really are. Um, so we, we're, this is our first year awarding the uh, Shout Factory Genre Filmmaker of the Future Award. So, and please uh, feel free to talk a little bit about what, what it is. I mean, it's not just their development deal, but. Sure, it's a five thousand dollar development deal. Uh, we are uh, so shop factory. Some of you 
would have heard at the kickoff event, I talked a little about what we do. We're, um, we've celebrated genre filmmakers. We're, we're all pop culture fanatics of the company. We, um, we love the, the films that we get to distribute and produce. And that includes filmmakers like John Carpenter and Brian De Palma and, and others who are probably favorites of yours. And so when we thought about what, what we'd like to look for in the festival, we thought about genre filmmakers. And so there was one film that um, really spoke to us. Uh, it uh, had, had a uh, uh, down on his luck uh, gambler, um, a psychic who seemed to have bad taste in boyfriends and um, and a nice twist at the end and that was misfortune. There you go. The winner on the shot factory I'm looking forward to seeing the 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 future version of this. Thank you guys absolutely thanks so much for the resource Now, on a similar token, uh, Addy Shankar, who is also presenting a five thousand dollar development deal. Um. So, is there anything I should talk about before I specifically? Coin. Sorry, what was that? Coin. Coin. We could talk about coin. Probably not a good use of uh, anyone's time. Just kidding. Um. No. Um. Here's what I want to say. As, as I was trying to figure out uh, who, who to award this to, I, I realized something. Um, this has nothing to do about the quality of what anyone else made. It's literally, it, it's, it has more to do with my personal taste, right? Because I, I, I've made a very similar kind of project multiple times over the course of my career. And um, and I also realized through the course of this, so, so thank you, I've, I've, I've had multiple epiphanies for the last few days watching this. Um, I realized through the course of this that I'm, I gravitate towards things that have tones that are a little odd, right? Where, where, it, it, where, where it's unconventional, someone takes a huge risk and it works. So there's, there's a film I saw and I was like, wow, this, is, this like shouldn't work at all, but for whatever reason it's working. And then I went back and I, and I watched um, something else that that filmmaker had done, which, which was a similar tone and really didn't work, but then I went, okay, so this person has tapped into something and, and, and kind of was persistent and kept doing it, kept doing it, kept narrowing uh, this, this voice and streamlining to the point where all of a sudden now it's working. And, um, so this award goes to, to, to someone really who I'm, who I'm looking at uh, and saying, man, I want to take this, this vibe you've got going on that's fucking crazy and, and help you turn it into like a ninja star that we can use to throw it somewhere. Um, so it's the abolisher. And then you got a $5,000 deal, you also got this. Obviously, I take the statue of the Zimbabwe deal. Thank you. 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 So now we're in an interesting position, right? So our honorable pension and our runner up have both won the development deals, which means that our grand prize winner is neither one of those. Uh, and so I'm very excited, very excited to present it to a different person. It's very nice. Uh, this movie was, was definitely a movie. It was very, you know, it was it was significant. It was powerful. It will, uh, you know, open some eyes. And so the winner. For, uh, and remember this: the film gets five thousand dollars, four thousand dollars to the filmmaker, and a thousand dollars to the key collaborator. So that's why it's an important thing. All right. And of course. <laughs> the winner, the joint winner of the CFC 2017 is Kristen Hansen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Dr. Trump. Kristen, there you go. Congratulations, fantastic work. Ladies and gentlemen, these fabulous filmmakers have uh, blown the doors open, and I mean that almost literally because now it's time to get food through those doors. I want to thank you all very much for taking part in CC 2017. Please talk to Stephen here about your experiences about the podcast. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for making this a fabulous year. Thank you so much. Good job, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did awesome work. And, uh, what's next with you guys? So, yeah, I a to talk to you guys. So, yeah. What's up? So, um, okay.